the truth is that God did create sex to be preserved in the context of marriage. God isn't withholding good things from us. He actually created sex to be one of the most beautiful parts about life. It's actually so sacred that the enemy has perverted it so hard because he wants to destroy anything that God makes as sacred as sex. Yeah, yeah. You know, and God... Hi, Gigi. Okay, ready? We don't need to start over. Hi, Gigi. Hi, Hi, Gigi. 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 (laughs) We love you guys. So if you notice, we're in a different spot today. We are on the couch. And if you guys remember, our first two episodes, our testimony video, and the first relationships episode was on the couch. Which, by the way, we're never going back to. I don't want to go back. I don't want (laughs) to. We are such babies. We didn't know what we were doing. You were good. I was acting like Princess Diana. Are you kidding me? I, you were like, I was so Diana. nervous. No, but I was like s- still trying so hard to please because I had the knowledge of scripture that I have now, but I was like still trying so hard to please people and I didn't want people to think <laughs> we we're weird Christians. And now we're like, bring it on. We are weird Christians. Um, <laughs> how are you? Are What's going on? Everything's good. Well, everything's good. <laughs> 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 everything's okay it's okay everything's we're okay. all a work in progress that's why i'm happy today that we get to sit and just chat and Me too. just be us you know yeah. how are you i'm really good actually honestly can i be honest we went on live a few weeks ago i don't know when it was and maybe i talked about it on the podcast too but i had kind of expressed i had read a journal entry about i was kind of like crying out to god being like i feel so far from you jesus i don't feel you i i don't like what am i doing wrong why i just feel so far i have felt so i feel like i'm i've like been rebirthed in my faith Mm. i don't know why i honestly think it's the fasting it's Mm. helped a lot i feel that like really young love for jesus you know when you first get in the faith and you're so obsessed with him like i feel that right now i feel on fire for god and i just i don't know i i tell me what you think about this the past few weeks i've had some things in my life and you've you and i have you and i have been through some things recently Mm. We got to stop being so vague on the podcast. Um, I have gone through some things recently that could seemingly be a bad thing. And just like my entire life, God has worked everything together for my good, for his glory. And I just want to encourage anybody who's watching that anything that seems like a bad thing could be actually a really good thing Mm. and even if it's not a good thing god can turn it into a great thing Mm -hmm. and that's just where i'm living right now i i I keep having these moments where i like i go like this and i I think about jesus and i'm like because i get so because i'm like god he does he works everything together yeah i was going through something for a little bit where i couldn't be alone like i was sleeping at your house every night and the past couple nights i've really just wanted to be alone the past couple nights I've been in this 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 sense of um peace yeah and I I really don't think there is anything quite better than being able to be by yourself Mm -hmm. with yourself and just God yeah and um I don't know it's just been really nice and I think if you really want to have the presence of God because I too was feeling very distant for him from him um, to really be with yourself mm-hmm. and be with the word and and just sit with him. I think it's it's a lot harder. I mean, it's really nice when you and I are together and we're able to just like sit together and pray and and read the Bible together. But I don't think there is anything quite like when you're alone going through something and you really just sit with God. A hundred percent. And um, it was just nice because, I don't know, I've been really, really anxious in the past mm-hmm. couple of days. I mean, of course, I have my moments, but I've just been, like, living in peace. Mm-hmm. I went to dinner last night by myself, and I just sat there, and it just, it, it felt really, really nice. And I just, it was the reminder of, like, if you are alone or if you're in your waiting season, like, this, it's an incredible opportunity because, it's so crucial for you to really stand on your own and be able to be with yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know, and God sees it. God mm-hmm. sees that. And I and it's like I kind of had a moment where I felt him being like, Good job, Bar. Mm. 
You're with yourself. Good job. This is what I wanted, you know? God, oh, that makes me so happy. Yeah. I ha- It's so weird. You and I go through a lot of the same things at the same time. and We actually, everything we go through is actually at the same time. It's, it's, really, it's pretty bizarre. It's really weird. And it's like two dummies trying to get each other <laughs> through the moments so when we can we, barely get ourselves through the moments. We imagine, uh, well... <laughs> we'll go we'll another time but um yeah I I also had that recently where I was struggling to be alone mm. and I think in life and especially like walking through your faith you need to be able to distinguish when is the time to surround yourself pe- with people and when is the time to get yourself into a more isolated place where you can hear God and 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 know him and what he like wants from you um and I've been also spending a lot of alone time recently and I think that's also why I feel so close to God I don't have as many voices in my head yeah distracting me yeah no it's true um but and you don't have anyone to sit there and dwell to that's true if it's one thing about me it's that mix ocd with with going through things and and the mind really plays tricks on you and and like it's so first for me like it can get so overbearing my thoughts where i i talk about this a lot i ask the same question over and over again and self-blame and what if i did this right wrong or what if i did this right and yeah, so that's why I think too is it's good to be alone because you you really have the opportunity to like give it to God. And mm-hmm. what I used to do is like, I mean, sometimes I still do it. I'm yeah. not going to be a hypocrite, but um, I would literally just like drive my friends nuts and just yeah. be like, but what if? I, but what would you do? You think what do you think? And it's something that if you are going through what I'm going, what I have experienced, the the obsessive compulsive that's really something that that you bring to god and work on because it it really can like keep you so held back Mm -hmm. and and held back from the journey that god has for you yeah i like that you bring that up about how you can sometimes it's better to be alone so you don't have people almost to complain to in a way yeah because i think you have to find a healthy balance because you should, like, for example, we're both, like, on the extremes of that. Like, you might, um, you're, and, but I think it's a really good thing that you have. You're really good at expressing yourself. You really are. You are, like, you're vulnerable. You wear your heart on your sleeve, and you're able to just, like, get it out, and that's healthy. Like, that's a good thing. You, my mom, I grew up with my mom, would cry, and then she would always tell me my whole life, like, crying is such a good thing. Because I cry, I won't get sick because she gets it out you know she also told us that she she's so cute i swear i think about this all the time she's just like you cry you know it's gonna age you so now every time i cry i'm like (laughs) oh yeah one time ari just needed a word she needed a word from god she needed a word that would get her out of the slump she's on the phone with my mom my mom tells her something 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 giving her advice and she was like and by the way you shouldn't cry over it because it's gonna age you tears gone pain gone she was fine that's all she needed yeah I think the the one great thing about you is that like you'll talk it out but then you will really bring it to God and you'll and you'll be like okay like I'm not gonna sit there and self-blame I'm I'm I literally I know my value I know my worth and I'm literally gonna let it go and I think and and that's a beautiful thing I think too you got to get a little delusional with it Mm, I know she and always tells really me good, that well because this is okay this is the thing so by the way today we're talking about breakups and soul ties and we'll get into that in a second but this is what I think when you do go through a situation like a breakup for example you need to there are two reasons why a relationship breaks uh it b- breaks up it's either God it was divine and God intervened and he didn't want that together or you might have messed something up or they messed it up. You know what I mean? You need to always take accountability and look at a situation for what it is and evaluate every single thing because even in the relationships that I've been that ended and I'm the one that ended them or nothing bad happened or it was all good, I still can find things that I did wrong and yeah. I need to change and for then the you next fix relationship. It. Yeah. And, and and I think a lot of people sit there being like, "Well, okay, I, I messed up. Like, did I miss out on opportunity?" No, you didn't. I mean, I I actually talked about this with my grandmother who was married for like 50 years. She met my guppa when he they were 15. Oh, wait, you're what? I, <laughs> 
you're what? I call him Guppa. Guppa? My, gr- my grandfather. That is so cute. Is that a Boston thing? No. I made it up. I love Isn't that. that funny? But, um, <laughs> you know, she, she, she would tell me, she'd be like, R. She was like, do you know what we went through? Do you know how much I messed up in my life yeah. and how much he messed up? If no, you can't mess up God's plan. But what he will do is he'll either separate you guys to have you guys work individually and bring you back together. And if he doesn't, it's not meant to be. Exactly. So we have to have that faith in God and let him really like surrender all our broken pieces and let him take care of it, which is the hardest thing to do. So I give everyone grace. Yeah. And and what I meant about the delusion is like, I will take accountability for whatever I did wrong and really ge- but be genuine and honest with myself. But then I'll also not sit there and drive myself crazy about what I could have done better. And I'll be like, you know what? If they if they said this was the reason and this was that, I'm going to believe them and I'm going to f- like combat the thoughts that want to drive me crazy to make me think otherwise that maybe it was this, maybe it was that. Like that's what I mean about being delusional. I'm going to be like, you know what? That's it. That's fine. He's not for me. They're not for me. It's all good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just, like, it's it's a beautiful gift to have. You know, it's hard. it is. It's, it's, it's hard and it takes work. It takes work. Yeah. So Which today gonna we're going to read a psalm. We've never read a psalm on here before. Or maybe we have, but not to like open up. Um, I love psalms so much. I think that if you can't read a whole chapter or you just don't have time or anything i think at least reading a psalm would be so good for you or a Mm. proverb um it really is that's that's really what i started off with when i first started reading the the bible i just it was relatable it was really easy to read it touched my heart in ways i can't even yeah what which one psalm 34 Why are you in a hundred? Can you get it for me? <laughs> I can't move in these jeans. I'm why did I wear cares. jeans? You know what? We should have worn leggings. Wore I almost wore jeans. I put Just these in the dryer for an they're hour. Our, and they're, they're our best friends. You really are, you guys. Oh. Um, oh, 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 oh. Before we do anything, guys, right now I am wearing our last piece of merch from the first collection right here psalm 34 this is the last piece it's our jesus sweatshirt with in the cement color we only have a couple mediums and a couple larges and then we're done with this collection so if you guys want it go get it girls gone bible it doesn't have the makeup all over the neck though like angela's don't look at it where are we starting psalm 34 okay so we are going to start with psalm 34 the happiness of those who trust in god I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, and delivers him. Mm -hmm. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Hmm. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and love many days and he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Mm -hmm. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. God, I highlighted some things. I just want to go back. We said at um, verse 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. When you look for Jesus, when you cry out to Jesus, he will hear you. This is one of the best scriptures ever. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Whenever you're going through something, whenever you're in fear, whenever you feel in danger, call out to God and say, God, send me an army of angels to encamp around me, form a hedge of protection around me, to minister to me, to love me, and to protect me. Those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. I feel like because of when you go through a breakup, you can feel so much lack, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so much emptiness and... You just need to remember that those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And then this is basically, verse 18 is kind of the reason we wanted to read Psalm 34 today. Instead of reading a story about heartbreak or breakups or divorce, we wanted to read something a bit more uplifting to show the true nature of God and, and who he is in these situations. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Yeah, it's, it's, it is so true. It is so true and i mean my story is based on um my broken heart yeah and, and my pain and um truly um he really is he really is with you in your broken heart and sometimes god like they say god will break your heart to save your soul he really will break your heart to bring you to that to that pain to 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 find him mm -hmm. and um Trust me, when I when somebody tells me they have a broken heart or, or if we're in a, going through a broken heart, I truly don't think there's anything more just awful than that feeling. It is, hands down, for me, the, the worst pain you could ever go through. I think that breakups, romantic breakups, are arguably one of the most painful things that you can go through yeah. in life because and tell me what you think about this this is my reasoning because people might argue um i would think that like a family member with cancer or a child some a parent's child dying is so much worse yes a hundred percent but i think that because when a tragedy happens outside of you it's like you feel grief and you feel pain and all these things but it's almost like even if it's close to you it's still outside it's it's a tragedy that's happening and you deal with it a breakup you feel that grief, you feel that pain, and then you add your ego on top of it, and then it's just unbearable because then your ego starts saying all these things and they're going to be with other people and I have to see them with someone else, and it's just unbearable. Like, it's the worst. It's, it's, it's really, I hate breakups. Honestly, I have spent a lot of my 20s be, being having extreme avoid and attachment style simply for the fact that I don't want to get into a relationship because I don't want to go through a breakup. That's how much I hate breakups. I'd rather, not really, but sometimes I think like I'd rather not experience love because I don't want to experience a breakup. Yeah, a lot a lot of people are like that. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it's, uh, it's just, I don't even know. It's, I truly would want to just hold everyone that is going through it. I mean, it be, what's so hard about it is it's like they're still alive. So you're mm. grieving someone that's still alive. Yeah. So that's why I think it can just be so much harder than when you actually do lose someone to a death. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, so true. Yeah, because, again, it's, it's I think, what do you, from, on, I don't know, the hardest part of a breakup is truly that ego hurt of the idea of them being with someone else, of them loving somebody else, of you having to see them with somebody else. I mean, there we got, we have never gotten more questions about a topic ever. I mean, people really struggling. Yeah, I mean, 
breakups are universal. All of us have experienced it. All of us will experience it. And people are sitting there being like, what do I do when we break up? And somebody, I have to like see them at work. Mm. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, I saw those too. Yeah. They, or like, I can't even imagine. It's like we go to school together. I mean, it's it's really, it's rough. Or if you still love them and, and you yeah. lose them. I mean, it's like, and then you're forced to move on. Yeah. You know, that's hard too. I mean, it's just... That's why, but when you, you really, here's the thing that I've learned through, through my breakup. God has never let me down when I, when I, Ugh. he, oh, when you connect, when you look back, when you look at, at your life, how he connects all the dots yeah. in your life, yeah. it's like, okay, well, that's why this happened. And that's why I couldn't be with this person. And that's why like healing is just it's not easy it's just but you have to just day by day by day it's a process healing healing is a process it is a process and it's not linear and a lot of people wrote in being like I feel like um I'll be good one day and I won't be the next day and I just want to tell anybody who feels that way that's normal that's completely normal it's not linear you're gonna feel like you're taking steps backwards I know for me, like going through a breakup, the nights and the mornings are the worst. Oh. I, I wake, I'll wake up, um, I'll wake up from my sleep and, and there's, I think like a moment upon waking up where you aren't fully like in this world yet. And so you're not completely aware of what's happened, especially if it's really fresh and you might even feel like you're still with this person and that like anxiety. That's the worst far- part for me about a breakup is the anxiety. The, the, yeah, that. Breakup anxiety is the worst. It, I hate you're it. On, you're in survival mode. The not eating, the, the, yeah. the, the, the pain, the excruciating pain you feel in the mornings. The, yeah, I remember, the loneliness at night. I like, remember laying in the shower where I I truly was like dead like yeah. I I can remember it like it was yesterday the the pain the the way I felt the not eating and I'm and I'm laying there because I had truly nothing left in me yeah. and the sh- the water is beating down on my head and I'm just like laying there being like what do I do yeah. like save me I I I truly I I cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel yeah what am I gonna do I am in so much pain it feels so physical I actually remember googling can you die from a broken heart because yeah. it was so painful I just didn't think I was gonna come out of it yeah yeah. Um, little did I know that it was so necessary that that I had to go through it. And if you know anything about us, is that we love to have our nails done, and it has made our life so convenient ever since we found Olive in June. Olive in June. Thank you for Olive in June. <laughs> right now, I have frosted, painted. I just love a white. Let me say. Those look so nice. I love it. What do you have on you the press You did that yourself? I did it myself. I mean, these are acrylics, but I paint on top of them. Those look so nice. I have... I never wear press-ons. Yeah. But they are so convenient, and they stay, and they look so natural. I love natural nails. You get everything you need for salon quality is in a manicure box. You'll customize your box with your choice of six polishes. Usually when I get nail polishes, the, the nail polish chips, and you guys, it does not chip. It literally lasts for over a week. So you know how expensive getting your nails done is. These This polish comes down to about $2 every manicure. You know what I love? I love the cuticle serum. It's my favorite. Have you tried? It? I have, I have, and I always have issues with dry cuticles, so I love it so much. <laughs> that was personal, but I do. I also love the acetone free polish remover pot. Yeah, I was spending like $200 every two weeks. It's so salon. bad. It's, it's so, so bad. much cheaper to, with Olive and June. I love it, and it looks just as good, if not better. Honestly. I think it looks better. I mean, I know. people compliment my nails all the time with Olive and June. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, visit oliveandjune.com slash ggb for 20% off your first Olive and June system. That was O L I V E A N D J U N E dot com slash ggb for 20% off your first Olive and June system. It was it was weird because I fought with God a lot. Yeah. I was really really angry at him. 
I was like, are you, are you doing this to, to, why are you doing this to me? Yeah. Why would you take away something that I love so much? Why are you, and, and I felt like, and it wasn't just even my broken heart. It was like one thing after another, yeah. after another. And, yeah. and I really feel like he brought me to such, he, my life was like in such shambles because he wanted me to see the goodness of him. A hundred percent. But I mean, we, I have so many points about like how to, how to get over a breakup, what to do, what not to do. I think first let's talk about the fact that the pain that you feel from a breakup, especially if it's a breakup that you didn't want, um, there comes a time i think it's it's not until you go through it yourself that you will be able to know for future experiences that god literally never gets it wrong and that i know we've said it all the time but god will never take something from you that's meant to be yours it's just not going to happen it can't happen what god has for you is for you and it says in the bible that any door that God opens, no man can shut it. And any door that he closes, no man can open it. And that's facts. That's true. And so I know that's hard. And I understand what it's like to have a wrestle with God. I've wrestled with him. Mm -hmm. And I've wrestled with him. And I've asked him why. And I've asked all the questions. And I've even doubted him. And I've even been mad at him. But time and time again, he has always revealed to me because I've chosen to see it. And that's the thing about it. Because a lot of people... And this is the truth. You have to have a bit of maturity and and like spiritual growth to understand that you you have to choose to see the good in whatever's happening. And you have to choose to believe God that he does have a plan for you. Because I know for me, even when I don't agree with God, and even if I have that doubt, it's okay. That doubt can be there. Just let it be there. I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? You are so, your thoughts are higher. Your ways are higher. So I, you have to understand that he knows what he's doing and trust in that. Yeah, I when I was when I was going on my journey with God um, through my breakup, I, I he was rapidly changing my life. I I would be praying to him like, please answer this, and he was very silent for a long time. Yeah, um, and we have to understand when God isn't answering our prayers it's either a no or I'm not finished with your story yet. And we have to understand that it's not its not that he's not there. It's just we don't know what he's doing behind the scenes. Yeah. And so, and I really think that it's all in the details of everything. Like, it's just so funny when I look at this past year because – I was I was praying every day like please answer this please answer this. He wasn't answering. He wasn't bringing back what I wanted or answering in the exact way, but what he did do for me was he brought me you first of all. And you know what the beautiful thing about a a, a broken heart is is it it brings you to this place of such vulnerability. I was someone who I always kind of acted perfect on the internet. I wanted to be a little bit of a mystery and not really show my life because it really wasn't anyone's business. But then again, I wanted to be some, I wanted to build a platform that helped so many girls and men. Mm -hmm. But, and so I think God had to really, well, number one, God had to bring me to such a place of brokenness to then be like, okay, my friends can't help me. My parents can't help me. My therapist can't help me the only one that can help you is him. So it, 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 when I was down so bad in the brokenness, that is when I, I was like, I, I ran to God and that's mm -hmm. when I found him, which is, it's, it's so beautiful when I think about my whole story this past year. The one thing that God wants us to do, he, he wants us to, to really rely on him and to, to be patient. I was someone who wasn't patient. Mm -hmm. I was a control freak. What, well, why is this? Why isn't this happening for me now? God really wanted me to to be like he. I could hear him saying to me like, "It is not your time yet. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not on our time. It really is on His time. So if He's taking someone away from you that you love so much, He's not trying to hurt you. He's such a compassionate God. He's never doing anything out of a place of wanting to hurt us. He's doing it for our greater good. So we have to understand that and we have to just sit in that yeah. and day by day be like, 
and the, and the one thing that I kept doing was um, I kept complaining yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, this is me being complete, completely vulnerable and honest. I, um, I kept asking why. And I'm watching what he was doing in my life, but I kept asking why. And I kept dwelling and I kept just sitting in sadness. And what that's going to do is it's just going to, it's going to prolong the journey that God has for you and the path that he has for you. And so you and I were talking about this the other day about gratitude. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to sit in gratitude and, and praise God when your heart is, is in pieces. But we just the one thing I really had to learn this year is surrender and give all our broken pieces to God. Yeah. Like every single piece, we give it to God. And when we have those moments of, of anxiousness, you say, I give it to God. I had a moment the other day where I was like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm in some pain. I'm feeling far from you. Um, my heart's feeling a little bit broken. I... I, I I'm, I, I pray for, for some kind of side. He was, he was silent, and then I went to sleep in some pain, but as I was waking up, I was actually at your house, I kept saying in my head, I was still sleeping, but I kept saying in my head, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your, on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. It kept replaying in my head over and over. It was such a godly moment. I woke up in tears just, and I told Angela, I said, you'll never believe what happened to me. That's happened to me so many times where so, I, I say scripture in my head while I'm sleeping. Yeah, so it's just really, I mean when I started reading, reading scripture and I started to really know that there was a God, know that there was a father that, that was right beside us only that only wants the best for us. Um, that's when I, I started to really surrender and really trust. And it's clearly not what you want from me. Yeah. I don't know why, but you do. I, I, I can't see behind the scenes, but you can. And and just know that when he's silent in the breakup and he's not answering your questions, he truly is orchestrating something. Such a He has such a beautiful journey for you. Yeah. He really, really does. Um, Wow. Yeah. Wow. Let's give it up for Ari Shmari. <laughs> that was incredible. I love hearing about your journey because I've been able to see firsthand some of the things that you've walked through. And you are so honest. And it's my favorite thing about you. And you're so accountable. And you really like you are like a dream for God because you see everything that you do that you you feel you need to change. Like you said about um how the complaining right I feel like complaining is a little bit of a harsh word to use but I think it's important that we touch on it because again like I said earlier yes you you have to express yourself that's where we were getting at you have to express yourself and you need to talk and you need to like talk to people about what you're going through but at the same time you need a healthy balance of not complaining mm. and not speaking death over it so much because you're feeding it yeah like those obsessive thoughts and those uh thoughts of um like rejection and unworthiness and why did this person leave or why did they do this or that or why wasn't i good enough like Yes, you should get those thoughts out to a certain extent, but you can't sit there and feed them over and over and over again because you're doing damage. Yeah, because although God has a plan for each and every one of us, the words we speak really do, really are the, the, the house we live in. Or yeah. is that, you know, it, it, it will manifest. And, and it did for me. I, I when When you speak negative, it's it's really is going to prolong yeah you're going to what stay, god has for you you're going to stay in that spot and i think too you know pastor Irwin made a great por point when he was on and he said something along the lines of um christians we have a misconception that if you're a christian your life is going to be perfect it's not just because you believe in jesus doesn't mean you're not you're never going to have heartbreak you are and in fact you might have it even more because when god wants you to move and you don't move he's going to force you to move and that's happened to me multiple times in my life and you and i had a conversation recently where we were saying how i said sometimes Okay, I'm going to be really honest with people. You may have gone through a breakup, right? And there's the argument of like, was it my fault or this person's fault? Or did God do it for us? Or is this what God really wanted? If there are some 
situations where somebody may have left you and you may have all these feelings of rejection and all these feelings of unworthiness because this person left you and you feel like you weren't good enough. When in reality, what it was is that God didn't want you with this person and he wanted you to move and you weren't going and he was giving you sign after sign and you were asking for signs and you were speaking it out loud saying, this person's not for me, he's not for me because you felt it, you knew. And since you weren't strong enough to make the decision, God had to make it for you and he orchestrated it and you are now in a situation where you feel left, you feel rejected, but really God wanted you out of the situation. It's you he wanted out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, I I really think it's important that we listen to those little things from God. We had a question that was like, what is the difference between your gut and anxiety? Mm. And I think that, so I believe that your gut is like the Holy Spirit. Your intuition is the Holy Spirit. I believe, you know, that that's who speaks to me and gives me those little messages. And then I believe that the Holy Spirit will speak to you in peace. He will speak to you with confirmation. He will speak to you with a deep knowing and understanding of what is right. Not saying that it's not hard or painful, but you'll know. You have a knowing. And um, anxiety comes with confusion and comes with um, scared fear and like being paralyzed and not knowing what to do. But when you're getting those little messages, this person's not for me. I'm not going to be happy here. This isn't what God wants for me. You have to listen to those. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And if you don't, he's going to come do it for you and it's going to be worse like that. You really have to have a deep understanding of 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 your of yourself and your identity to really understand your value, value and to yeah. um and to to know what's what's good for you because when you really know your value and you really know who you are and you know who God is. Yeah. You can then make better decisions and then you can make and then you can understand like is this my anxiety or is this a gut feeling is this something I should be in yeah and and I was always like looking for for some kind of void I always I always I seeked love like my you know I always I, I talk about this a lot my dad was always working and and so my my boyfriends became my family mm-hmm. And so that that then became my identity and in my life. And when you when you are only seeking love, you're you're gonna be very empty. It's just a void. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's I'm just really it's crucial. Like spend as and it's hard. Don't mm-hmm. do you agree? Yeah. It is probably we all want love. We all want we all want to feel loved and, and and have that rush and and to to have a partner. I mean, isn't that the goal for everyone? But if you can spend time alone, real time, you will feel feel so free yeah. that you won't have that anxiousness when you're in a relationship you're it's it's just going to be someone who's going to make you better yeah. that is probably the biggest thing i learned this year godly relationships aren't two people who complete each other they're two complete people who add to the other one's life yeah only jesus seriously can can fill that oh, empty absolutely. void in your life i i I'm, I, I love love. I love to love. I, I, I just love it. But I always had this sense of emptiness within my heart. And yeah. it truly is because I put men before God. I didn't really know God. Yeah. He was always trying to find me. But again, like I said, that's why he broke my heart so bad yeah. out, out of compassion to, to say, I'm right here. I'm waiting for you. I want to help you. I want to bring you to your your greatest destiny. I want to change your life, but you need me first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So come to me mm-hmm. and I will help you. I will make you the best version of yourself. But first, I need it to just be me and you for a little yeah. bit yeah. and no one else, no other men, yeah. because they're not going to fill that, that, that void that you've been feeling your whole life. Yeah. Whenever you're dwelling or you're worried, I always look at you and I'm like, I'm not worried about you at all. You are so, God has you like this in his hand. He loves you so much. You walk in the path that God has set out for you more than anybody that I know. And it's so hard and it's not easy in your industry and where you're at and in LA and all the things. It's not easy and you are so obedient, especially recently, the past few months. You're doing everything right. Yeah. There's no way 
in heaven that he is not taking care of you and giving you everything you exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask think or imagine yeah and don't you look at your don't you look at your life like wow this didn't work out because I truly wouldn't be right here right now I don't I have I've said it before, I'll say it again, an unshakable faith in God because I have seen time and time again over and over the same story in my life that something looks bad and it ends up being good. And if it's bad, he uses it for my good. Every single time, every heartbreak I've ever experienced and my major heartbreak and, and big testimony wasn't um heartbreak from a guy from a relationship it was from being in a dark place kind of at my own it was my own fault and and being involved in things I shouldn't have and drinking and whatever but like he the worst things that that have ever happened to me are the best things that have ever happened to me Mm. and because I have that knowledge I know this is what I want to say Every time that I go through a breakup now, now I don't want this to sound like sociopathic, okay? It's not that I enjoy pain and it's not that I enjoy that bad things happen. Although when I do go through a breakup especially, while I'm in pain and I have anxiety and I have all the bad things, on the same coin, I have almost like a joy because I know that this situation, this breakup, this heartbreak is about to propel me into God's arms. Like every single time me and God come together so hard that I'm just like, you know what? It's worth going through this pain. Yeah. And and, and he has to, like, what'd you say earlier? It was so good. You were like, he breaks, he breaks your heart to save, to your, save soul your soul. Because you need, you need, you need these t- hard times to grow. It's character development. Yeah, it is. It is. And and we get so complacent in relationships. Oh, yeah. And then when he, like, breaks our heart, we're, we're, we're starving for something. We're starving for our father. Our, we're starving for him. Yeah. You know? Um, I know. It's, it's, you're so right in the sense that you say, like, I know he's about to propel me. It's so Every time. true. Every time. And I and and we need to start we need to start saying like, okay, this broken heart, this isn't gonna destroy me. This isn't for 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 God to hurt me or or for because because they're gonna go find someone better. This is for my greater good. Yeah. Get excited. This yeah. is about to God's about to to move me to do something in my life. You guys, you have no idea. Had I ha- went through this pain in my life it would have never propelled me to to run to God to find him to then find myself to then find my people to then find my purpose yeah truly yeah Yeah. truly I'm telling you the most beautiful stories and testimonies are birthed out of heartbreak it's necessary for your life and it's actually a really good thing and I encourage you to look at it that way. I know it's weird. I know it's weird to go through something really negative and be like, I'm going to look at this as a positive thing. But it is. It is. I've seen it in my life and I've seen it in everybody else's life. There's purpose in your pain. You're growing. You need these moments. It's so it's so rich what's happening to you in this heartbreak. If you're going through a breakup, you go chase Jesus. Yeah. That's that's the best thing you could possibly do and and that's the only way to save yourself from pain and from experiencing more suffering than you need to. Um, so what 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 what, what to, not to do? What not to do? Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is the and this is the hardest one that you can do. But if you can seriously cut off. It's so hard now with social media. That is what makes breakups so gruesome oh, yeah. and and just awful because you can literally see everything. You can see who they follow. You can then see who, who yeah. then you can put the pieces together, who they're hooked, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. If you can cut it off. No contact. I always think about how back in the day before there was social media, if you broke up with somebody, there was a good chance you might never even see him again. God, it, it must have been so easy to get over people. Now you see him all over the internet, and you have to have such a profound 
amount of discipline and self-control to not look. My number one rule is that after a breakup, I don't look. And do you know why I don't look? Because I've gone through a breakup that I looked. I looked. I had the fake. My friend had a fake. I would go. I'd look at the following list, see who they're following. Did they follow him back? What are they doing? Where are they at? Oh, he's in the same place that this girl he followed last week is. That means they're together. I mean, it is recipe to drive yourself absolutely mad. The truth is when someone, because that's the hardest part of a breakup, right, is like when they're going to be with somebody else. I think a couple of things. When you go through a breakup, and you're like really distraught over this person and if the person feels the same about you and whatever just because they look like they're having a good life on instagram you don't know what's going on because you probably look like you're having a good life too so you just have to put it into perspective that you're by looking you're seeing something that's not even real and you're torturing yourself and just because they followed a girl literally might not even mean anything but we're creating these stories in our head and it's absolutely it'll drive you nuts i think too a big thing because a lot of people wrote in saying that they what do you do when you feel like you're still meant to be with this person what do you do when you're not ready to let go I have one thing from you that I know God it's in scripture that God does not want you looking at the past he wants you looking forward to what he has for you in the future he gives you future and a hope and you looking back and constantly dwelling on the past and the past situation and your ex and wishing you could get back together, I feel like is almost like blasphemous against God because you're not trusting in the future that he promises you, yeah. that he has good things for you. And so to sit there and doubt God so hard, I really think is it's, it's hurtful to God and it's bad for you. When you are going through a breakup, there's one thing you have to do, and I'm, I hope this doesn't sound insensitive, but you have to move on. You have to choose to move on. There is no wishing you are with someone. When you break up with someone or they break up with you, you have to immediately move on as if you're never getting back together. And whether you do or not is up to God. And it might happen, but you must move on and you must not hold on to hope. You can't hold on to bitterness. You can't hold on to anger. You move on. Yeah, the worst thing you can ever do is be is be bound in chains and sit there thinking that someone is just going to come back yeah. and, and waiting and and not taking that time to seriously grow yeah. and grow your relationship with God so he can do the works in your heart and yeah. in your mind to make you the best version of yourself. Exactly. And um, I went through a breakup <laughs> a few years ago where I broke up with this person and I wasn't necessarily completely ready for it to end, although I knew it was the best thing. Um, I, in my heart, hoped that this person would, would reach out, right? I did, I did, I, I, everybody does. Even if you don't like the person, you probably hope they reach out to you one day. I did, I hope they reached out. But as soon as we broke up, I immediately had a, an understanding and a peace that this person would never reach out to me. I just said it to myself, they're never reaching out. And thank God I did that because they didn't. But you know what I mean? I chose to have that perspective. I'm not going to sit there and wait. Do you think they will? I hope they do. Do you think they will? It's just like, for what? It's, it's, you can't hold on like that. Yeah. And, and it says in the Bible for, for women, um, if, if somebody does walk away from you, I think this is another thing that you don't do. If somebody decides to walk away from you, I think you, you really do like just focus on yourself and, and not run and beg and complain and, and ask for them back it says in the bible that that men should pursue us and so chasing after a man that decided to walk away i think hold hold, you have more value than that you you need to value yourself more than that absolutely truly let a man lead you yeah you do you let the man lead you so yeah a hard part um about breakups a lot of the time and this is something that you kind of have to accept is even if a relationship ends completely peacefully and amicably, there's usually always a villain in the story. And that's also another part of breakups that you have to accept. You most likely will be the villain in somebody else's story. I know I've been in relationships that I was a genuine, I've been in relationships where I was not an angel. 100% I have. I take accountability, I know this. But I've also been in relationship relationships where 
I, there's not one thing I could have done better. And I still somehow ended up being a villain in this person's story. It's just how it is. Yeah. And sitting there and like being like, oh, but this, but that, trying to control the narrative and what these people think about you and what other people think, you know what to do. You sit back and you let God vindicate you. You let him be your defender and have him clear your name. It's not your problem to sit there and try so hard to control the narrative of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Honestly, guys, I mean, we can sit there and blame ourselves and, and say, what could I have done different? Or, or what if if I did this, would, it, would we have still been together? Every God has a plan. John 13, verse 7, you do not understand now what I'm doing, but later you will. Like, truly, later you will understand yeah. why this all happened. Yeah. You will. And so let it hurt and 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 take every day day by day with god with your healing and and he will connect the dots to your life he will send you angels he will bring the right people into your life to get you through whatever you're going through and he is doing this for a reason and when you can rest in that and rest knowing that he took this person away to do the works in your life to bring you to I don't know if it's back to that person or or, or to something better or or whatever it is but he's doing it for a bigger purpose and for a reason I think too God wants so badly he wants to be your comforter. Yeah. He wants to be the one who brings you peace and brings you joy. So in those moments, running to somebody else, and we're all guilty of it, or at least you know, talking to somebody else or getting attention for somewhere else, God wants nothing more for you to leave a relationship or a situation and then just go be alone. It's so beautiful. It's the only way to fully heal. I really encourage it because sitting there and going to somebody else immediately only does more damage than it does good, and that's the absolute truth. Um, yeah. You don't need it, it, you It's okay to feel pain. It really is, and the sooner you accept that you will feel pain, the happier you'll be. I think another thing that we should touch on is because, yes, we should believe that God has a better plan for us and that person wasn't for us and blah, 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 and, and all that good stuff. And, and it's it feels good to be on that side of it, to be on the side of like, well, God knew they weren't for me and he wants something better for me. Absolutely. But there are situations in which that we could have done better and we could have done more and we... We have to take responsibility for the part we play in our own suffering and for the part we play in a downfall of a relationship. We all have faults. We've all done things. And even if somebody else did worse or more than you in a relationship, I encourage you to take accountability and to really reflect on what you did and, and could have done better. There's a healthy way to take accountability. You don't have to torture yourself to acknowledge the things you've done wrong. Here's another thing that, that I am a big advocate in. If you do wrong, take down the ego and apologize. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of people don't like to do that. Yeah. They don't like to come forth and say, hey, you know what? I'm I'm really they rather just mask the pain and get over it and yeah. instead of being like you know what you are a big part of my life I'm really sorry and, and I apo- do you know how much that frees you Yeah and and I used to be someone who had such an ego that I'd be like no I I don't whatever yeah. The best thing you can ever do is take accountability. Mm-hmm. Take accountability. Let's get into something a little bit uh before we go because we've been going for a little bit We want to talk about soul ties and soul ties are a bit of a debate within the Christian community because people say that soul ties aren't biblical. And while the Bible doesn't explicitly reference soul tie by that name, I do believe that soul ties are an actual thing. I don't think that it's like a new age thing term that's come out like I I do believe like and if you don't like the term soul ties I would refer to it as like spiritual ties um there is scripture that supports this the bible really quickly let me just say that so a soul tie is a strong spiritual and emotional connection that you have with someone after being intimate with them or you don't even have to be intimate with them and you can have the same type of soul tie. Um, I want to read the scripture that supports this. So the Bible warns against entering ungodly relationships. He says, my son, if sinners entice you, do not give in to them. Do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. Proverbs 1, 10 and 15. 
And then in 1 Corinthians 6.16, it says, Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. Um, so between there they also talk about in scripture about like knitting of souls like two souls becoming one by knitting together between jonathan and david in first samuel 18 1 it says now when he had finished speaking to saul the soul of jonathan was knit to the soul of david and jonathan loved him as his own soul but the godly soul tie there's only one godly soul tie two one we're soul tied with god our spirits are tied with his and then the other godly positive good soul tie is in marriage yeah therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh god uses intimacy in marriage to serve god as one now we're going to touch on something that's a little bit whatever but we talk about everything on girls gone bible the truth is that God did create sex to be preserved in the context of marriage. That is the truth, whether people like it or not, whether we want to agree with it or not, that's what it is. God isn't withholding good things from us. He actually created sex to be th one of the most beautiful parts about life. It's actually so sacred that the enemy has perverted it so hard because he wants to destroy anything that God makes as sacred as sex. Yeah, yeah. You know, and God doesn't withhold it to be mean to us. He 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 tells us not to he, to abstain because it leads to death. It leads to demonic oppression. It leads to g demonic soul ties. And every time that you are intimate with somebody, your soul binds with theirs, whether you want to accept it or not. And it's really really freaky and i would describe it almost as being and this is a part of christianity that a lot of people shy away from because it's it's too spiritual for some people but i really believe that denying the spirituality in christianity is truly denying jesus because if god raised if god's spirit raised jesus from the dead how much more spiritual do you want to get like we live in a spiritual world we're spiritual beings and this stuff is real i believe that when you're intimate with somebody it's like a USB stick going into a kid. Like, whatever they got in them is about to come onto you, demon-wise. It's, it's so true. Yeah. It's and, so true. And I believe that's why so many people are so are so lost with, yes. like, all these young girls that are or young guys that are hooking up with this one and hooking up with the, Have you ever felt that where you're, like, so depressed and depleted it's and you worst. don't know why? It's because you're literally – it's like a soul tie – you're, you're giving your body to someone and, and that becomes... You're becoming you're one giving, with Yeah, one. yeah. You are doing the most sacred act. We live in a society, and I'm so passionate about this, because we live in a society that is so pro-sex and pro-hookup oh, culture. And I don't care if people think we're the most annoying people ever. It's wrong. It is. It's wrong. Sex is the most beautiful, sacred thing that God has created, and we are just giving we're it We're glorifying up. it. We're, we're giving it up like it's nothing. We're glorifying hookup culture that to have friends with benefits that you can go do the most sacred act with somebody who literally doesn't care about you. Um, it's okay to hook up. It's okay yeah, to have a high body my, count. My, you know what, my, my life. It's like, no, actually, it's really sacred. I mean, today's episode isn't about sex. Maybe yeah. we will have one one day. But like, anyways, my point is soul ties are are the result of having a soul tie with somebody is is obsession it's like a mm -hmm. very um it's obsession it's obsession it's um attachment it's being tied to somebody it's making an idol out of them it's being dependent on them and it's really bad and i encourage you to break these soul ties we'll put some videos in the description some guided prayers that i would encourage you to say yeah um you want to break these soul ties but you don't even have to have sex with someone to have a soul tie you can develop an ungodly soul tie just by having a dependence on someone mm -hmm. an obsession with someone soul ties are often bred in abuse well um i think that's it for today guys 
we might have to do a part two of breakups. I honestly think we should. We yeah. have so much more to talk about. Yeah, it's it's so, and we it, didn't answer any questions. We didn't answer. We should. We'll do. We'll do. A, we'll do a part two. We can do a part two. There, um, there's so many people going through pain and suffering and feeling alone and feeling like this is the end and feeling like I'm never gonna find my person and and I'm not good enough. Well, we're here to tell you, yes, you are. Jesus loves you so much and He's with you and He will get you through this and He is bringing you through this for a reason for the greater of your good and he will um he's got you yeah he's got you if i could say anything to close i would say this is how you need to pray you need to pray and ask jesus to plead the blood of jesus all over you your situation the other person and whatever soul tie that you have with them ask jesus to enter into the gap between you and this person and to heal it to redeem it to restore it and bring it back to life whatever's dead is being brought back to life in jesus name in your life we love you guys god bless you love you love you love you guys so much